Hello everybody. We are going to continue with yarns today. We talked about yarns in general. So today we are going to dive into the details of yarns and learn a little bit more about the classification of yarns. So we already know about spun yarns, filament yarns. We talked about regular filaments, more, uh, bulked filaments, monofilaments, multifilaments. So these are some categorizations based on the length of the fiber. So spun yarns are basically staple fibers that are uh, spun to turn them into yarns. Uh, and filaments are usually the yarns that come out of the spinneret directly as a yarn. One other classification is based on the twist of the yarn. We talked about it in our last class, and we talked about S twist and Z twist. Uh, and I want you guys to understand. So S twist is when you are trying to write an S and the twist direction is in the direction of the middle of the letter S. This is called an S twist. If it is like the letter Z, then it is a Z twist. So we are always looking at the center direction of the letter. So this is a Z twist, this is an S twist. And the amount of twist uh, will be different for different types of yarns. We define the amount of twist in turns per inch or TPI. So TPI means turns per inch. This is how we define the amount of twist. And if you look at this yarn, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine twists or turns per inch. So this is a nine TPI S twist yarn. Okay. And in the metric system, they go by turns per meter. Some yarns, especially the ones that are hairy, that have a tendency to attach to each other easily. Those type of yarns don't require too much twist. So we usually have lower twist on those yarns. Um, but carded yarns, which are yarns that are made out of short cotton fibers, those require more twist because those are shorter fibers. Combed yarns are generally longer staples. So they require a little bit less twist compared to carded yarns. Uh, fine yarns usually require more twist than coarse yarns and weaving yarns uh, require more twist than knitting yarns because in knitting you don't have a lot of tension on the yarn, uh, there's not a lot of friction on the yarn as much as it is in weaving, so uh, if you're making a woven fabric then the yarns that you use, especially in the warp direction, and we'll talk about warp and filling directions, uh, but especially in the warp direction, you require very strong yarns because they have to withstand a lot of uh, friction. So those kind of yarns require more twist because the twist holds the fibers, the short fibers together. These are two um, yarns. Again, this is an S twist. So if you look at the yarn and try to put the letter S in it, this is kind of the direction. And um, this one has lower twist. So if you try to count turns per inch, this is one, two, three, four turns per inch on that screen. If you look at this one, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turns per inch. So this has a higher twist than this one. And you see all the yarns that are the short fibers that are sticking out of the yarn. Um, these determine how hairy the yarn is. So the hairier yarns usually have more short fibers sticking out of them. <coughs> and uh, we talk about ply. So two ply yarns are usually made out of two yarns that are twisted together. So if you look at these here, these are two yarns uh, that are twisted together to make a single yarn. So we call this a two ply yarn. So in, uh, especially with staple fibers or spun yarns, we do this a lot. We have yarns and then we take single yarns and then twist them together, creating a two ply yarn, which makes them a little bit stronger and the twist holds them together. This is a Z twist. So if you look at the direction, it's in the uh, 
z direction here this is a thick thick wool spun yarn um, with a z twist and it's it's pretty hard to count turns per inch on this one because this looks like a single yarn it's not a two ply yarn two ply yarns you can kind of see the turns but because this is a single one uh, to calculate how many turns per inch this is you have to use a certain equipment there are machines which uh, can untwist the yarn and count the turns per inch now we'll talk about uh, ply yarns this is a z twist yarn this is an s twist yarn this is a two ply because there are two yarns that are twisted together to make this yarn but this one is a three ply yarn which means there are three separate yarns that are twisted together to create this yarn and this is a silk yarn and if you guys still remember silk yarns are the only filament fibers that are natural so all natural fibers are staple except for silk silk is a filament because it's a long fiber so you don't see any hairiness and the yarn is very smooth there's no short fiber sticking out so the amount of twist really depends on what kind of fabric you're making what kind of yarn you're making so when when a yarn has about one to three turns per inch we call it a low twist yarn and that's usually for smooth filament yarns that don't require a lot of twist to stay together uh, so that's mostly for fibers that have more integrity napping twist can be around 12 turns per inch for warp yarns six to eight turns per inch for reft yarns uh, a regular or average twist is 20 to 30 turns per inch or tpi um, if you go a little bit higher tpi especially for harder yarns we call it a hard twist or volley twist that can be 35 to 40 tpi uh, twist on twist means you twist on ply in the same direction as a single yarn so you have two single yarns that are already twisted and then you use the same twist direction and create a two ply yarn with those yarns uh, crepe yarns have uh, very high TPI, 40 to 80 TPI in general. Um, these are unbalanced yarns and they kind of create crinkle fabrics. This is kind of a summary of what I just talked about. Again, you can see the amount of twist here. So the TPI here is much higher. Here it's a much looser twist. So the TPI is probably about four for the uh, screen, what you see on the screen. So that's a low twist, that's a high twist. Smooth or bulk filament yarn generally don't require a lot of twist. Spun yarns, um, it depends. If you're going to make flannel fabrics, flannelettes, blankets, those type of fabrics, and you're going to nap the surface, which means like you create a fuzzy surface by brushing the surface of the fabric. They have a napping twist in general. Average twist is the most common type of twist. So it's kind of an average amount of TPI. Uh, it's used for most fabrics. Volley twist is a high twist used for volley. Crepe twist is, you can see the kind of fabric here, it's that crinkle type fabric and we required a lot of twists for those. We'll talk a little bit about yarn size. I did talk about this in one of our in-person classes before. So when we talk about the size of a yarn, we are talking about how thick the yarn is, what the diameter of the yarn is, right? So um, there are two different systems. There's the direct system and there's the indirect system. Yarn numbering system like the NE and M system, that's the uh, indirect system. Uh, the denier and text is the direct system. So in the direct system, you calculate the weight of yarns that are a certain length. In the indirect system, you calculate the length of the yarn that are in a certain weight. So length per unit weight is what we calculate there in the direct system, we calculate weight per unit length. So basically in the denier system, you take 9,000 meters of a yarn, put it on the scale, calculate how many grams is that. 
if 9,000 meters of yarn is 10 grams, and another 9,000 meters of yarn is only five grams, then you can kind of tell that the one that is five grams is actually a finer yarn because they are both the same length. They're both 9,000 meters, but one of them is 10 grams, the other one is five grams, which means for the same length of yarn, you're getting a smaller weight. That means it's a finer yarn. The diameter is not so thick. So when the number goes down in the denier system, that means the yarn is finer. When the number goes up in the denier system, that means the yarn is thicker. Uh, the text system is the same thing, except instead of taking 9,000 meters of yarn, we take 1,000 meters and it's a direct system. The smaller numbers means finer yarns, the larger numbers means uh, coarser yarns. Now in the yarn count system though, we do the opposite. What we do is we actually keep putting yarn on a scale until we get to one pound. And once we get to one pound, we calculate the length. And this is the English yarn count system. In the metric system, we usually um, put yarn on a scale until we reach to 1000 grams. And then we calculate the length of that yarn. So when you have uh, two scales next to each other and you have two different yarns and you put, um, you know, as much as you need to get to 1000 grams on each scale. So you have yarns that are both 1000 grams or one kilograms, right? And then you look at the length of that yarn. So if they are both the same weight, but one of them is only say five meters while the other one is 500 meters. That means the 500 meter was one is a finer yarn because they're, they both weigh the same. They're both the same weight. So the difference is you need a whole lot more uh, yarn to get to 1000 grams if your yarn is too fine. So in this system, when the number is higher, the length is higher, that means the yarn is finer. When the number is lower, that means the yarn is coarser. So it's an indirect system because the numbers go up when the yarn is finer. So for example, this is an NE50 in the English yarn count system, and this is an NE10. So when the number goes down, your yarn diameter gets larger. So this is why we say the finer the yarn, the higher the number is gonna be in the English or metric yarn count system. But we usually use denier for synthetic materials uh, a lot more. And in, in Europe, they usually use the metric yarn count system, especially for cotton, wool, and worsted yarns. Another thing you should know is Let's say we're talking about 40 deniers versus 10 deniers. Again, 40 denier is going to be a thicker yarn, a coarser yarn, because in this system, when the number is higher, it's a coarser yarn. When the number is lower, it's a finer yarn. And if you have a yarn that is made out of, say, 20 filaments, let's say this yarn is made out of 20 filaments. That means there are 20 filaments inside this yarn and the total is 40 denier, but yet then you can divide 40 by 20. That means each of those fibers here are two deniers per filament. Okay, so we use that term two DPF, denier per filament. So you have two deniers per filament, you have 20 filaments and that makes up this one yarn, which is 40 denier. That's for multi-filaments. Um, the text system, again, is very similar to denier. One text is actually 0.11 denier. Uh, there's text, there's 10 text, there's one decitex. One decitex is the same as 10 text. So these are different uh, yarns based on the count, the regular numbering system, the European system. So two at the beginning means it's a two ply yarn. So all of these are two ply yarns. 
and 70 is the yarn count. So you see 70 is the finer yarn, five is the coarsest yarn of all. So as the number goes down in the system, uh, the yarn gets coarser. This is uh, 3,200 yards per pound. So that means this yarn, to get to one pound, you need 3,200 yards of this yarn. But on this one, uh, actually, let's go on this one, you only need 260 yards of this yarn to get to one pound, because this is much thicker and this is much finer. So you need less of this to get to one pound, but you need more of this to get to one pound. So the number goes up when the yarn is finer. When we talk about the quality of a yarn, we talk about the uniformity of the yarn. So uh, regular yarns are more uniform along the length. It doesn't change its diameter, uh, you know, throughout the length of it. Uh, and those type of yarns are usually better quality. So the more uniform the yarns are, the better quality the yarns are. We also classify yarns based on the structure of the yarns. So we talk about simple yarns, then we talk about novelty or complex yarns, and we talk about composite yarns. So this classification is based on how the yarns are created, what kind of texture, what kind of structure they have. Uh, composite yarns are yarns that are made by combining a couple different yarns. So when you're combining one yarn with another that are totally different, for example, you're combining a metallic yarn with spandex yarn, that's a composite yarn. If simple yarns are what we have seen so far, you know, that are single yarns, there are ply yarns, uh, and then there's cord and rope. So we'll talk about simple yarns. Novelty or complex yarns are the fancy yarns that uh, we create to make really fancy fabrics. So let's start with simple yarns. In simple yarns, all parts are alike. So we're not combining different types of yarns together. We have the same type of yarn. And if we have just one single yarn, it's called a single yarn. But if you combine one, yarn with another and you twist them together, you call it a two-ply yarn. Or if you take three of the same yarn, twist them together, we call it a three-ply yarn. So ply is basically just taking singles and twisting them together creates a ply. Cord yarns are made out of ply yarns, but you basically take multiple ply yarns and then you twist them together to create a cord and then rope is when you take multiple cord yarns and twist them together to create a rope so i'll give you an example this is a ply yarn and you take two ply yarns and that creates a cord and this is a cord and then you take a couple cords and twist them together, that creates a rope, okay? And the twist direction can be different in each of those. For example, this one has a Z twist. This one has an S twist. This one also has an S twist. But when you combine them together, you create a Z twist to combine those two ply yarns and make a cord yarn. Here, this is Z twist, Z twist, Z twist, Z twist you are creating an S twist here, combining those ply yarns and making cords. And then you take these cord yarns and twist them with a Z twist, making a rope, okay? So this is a rope right here. And when you separate those yarns, you're gonna notice that this here is a cord. This is another cord, this is another cord, this is another cord. So this rope is made out of four different cords. And then when you take each cord, you're going to see that this is a two-ply yarn, this is another two-ply yarn, this is another two-ply yarn. So this cord here is made out of three two-ply yarns that are twisted together. And then when you take just one two-ply yarn and try to separate 
and untwisted, you're going to see two single yarns. But again, notice in simple yarns, we only have one kind of yarn. It's all the same kind of yarn. It's just the number of yarns that are put together. This is a single spun yarn. It's twisted on its own to create a single yarn. These are ply yarns. This is a five ply yarn, four ply yarn, three ply yarn, two ply yarn. So these are different single yarns that are put together, twisted together to create a ply. And then um, these are two ply yarns and then you combine them together to make a cord here. And this is a rope that is basically made out of multiple cords. Sewing threads can be ply yarns, corded yarns. It can be in different textures. It can be a monofilament or coarse spun. So sewing thread can be any of those type of yarns, um, but they're usually finished with lubricants or some kind of wax so that when it goes through the sewing machine and goes through all that friction, it doesn't break. Now let's talk about fancy or novelty yarns or specialty yarns. And these are actually my favorite because these type of yarns create amazing fabrics. The fabrics have really cool texture usually. And you can actually create your own yarn. If you're really creative, you can take some fibers, you can play with them, or you can take some yarns and you can play with them and create something really interesting. So uh, one characteristic of these type of yarns is that they are made out of three different sections. So one is the base or the core material. And then you have an effect yarn. And then there's another yarn that you use as a binder to bind the effect yarns to the base of the yarn. So you're creating some effects on the yarn, basically. So in this case, there's this base. And then this is the effect yarn. And then to hold the effect on the base, you use a binder and bind everything together. Now this yarn is a novelty yarn. And the coolness about this yarn is it has those thin spots and thick spots. You have this binder and then there's a base strand, okay? This is another one. So you have these effect yarns that are creating a loop here. You have a base in the middle and then you have a binder that is con connecting the base to the uh, effect yarn. You could technically call these composite yarns because it is made out of you know, several different types of yarns, but um, these are novelty or fancy yarns. They are just made to create a certain effect. So this one has the same thing. It has these extra loops around it and you have a base and a binder. So let's talk a little bit about some of the popular ones. Slub yarns are yarns that have those thick spots and then thin spots. And when you make a fabric out of these yarns, it creates a very different distinct effect or texture on the fabric. These are called spiral or corkscrew yarns. Uh, this is called a ratine yarn. Uh, this is a knot yarn or spot yarn. These kind of yarns are kind of like the slob yarns, but they have knots along their length. Uh, this is a spike or snarl. And this is a loop yarn. So these are some actual yarns. This is a two-ply slob yarn. So slob yarns usually have those thick spots and then thinner spots. This is called a boucle yarn. And this is a loop yarn. So these are kind of similar. Um, on this yarn, you have a lot of those loops. These, the effect yarn here is just made out of loops. And in here, the boucle, these distinct loops are called boucle. And this is a boucle yarn. So when you make a fabric out of this, it's a boucle fabric. It, it looks really cool. Uh, this is a knob or slob yarn again kind of similar to this one with the thicker and thinner spots. And this is called a cable yarn. 
this is a slob yarn again. So this part has a certain amount of twist, but this part is left a lot looser and that creates the effect. This is a flock yarn or a flake yarn. So flock yarns are yarns that have little tufts of fiber in different colors along the yarn. So this one is a two ply yarn and you see those little pink fibers, green fibers. These are kind of tucked into the uh, two ply when they're twisting and that creates a certain effect. So this is a tweed suiting fabric with flock yarns. And you can see those yarns alongside when you make the fabric. It just creates a different effect. Uh, this is another uh, knot yarn or spot yarn. So it has those uh, spots or they look like nubs and it just kind of repeats in certain spots on the, on the yarn. Um, this is a curtain made out of nub yarns. So you get that kind of effect with these lines, especially for the areas where the yarn is a little bit thicker you can get that kind of look, okay? And you can see it uh, here a little bit closer. So those snub yarns or knob yarns, they have these thick spots and then you can see them on the surface of the fabric when you're making fabrics with them. This is a snarl yarn. Uh, and this is a fabric made with snarl yarns. So you can see that those kind of yarns are just sticking out on the surface, creating a different effect on the fabric. Um, boucle yarn or loop yarn. You, can, you could call these loop yarns as well because they're made out of loops. And this is a boucle fabric. Uh, so it's made out of boucle yarns and you can see how cool this fabric looks. You know, it's not a regular woven fabric. Those are usually fancier novelty fabrics. This is another boucle fabric. These are corkscrew yarns. Uh, this is called a chenille yarn. Chenille yarns basically have a base and then the effect yarns are kind of tucked inside the base before you twist them. So when you start pulling them out, you can see those short yarns that are, you know, around that yarn. So there's the base and these are the um, effect yarns, okay? This is another chenille yarn. Chenille yarn. And this is a chenille suiting fabric. Uh, this fabric has almost all those different kinds of fancy yarn. So this one is a single yarn here. This is a corkscrew. Um, that's a single yarn. That's a corkscrew. And they made this fabric using single yarns and corkscrew yarns. Uh, this is a tweed fabric or sorry, this is a snob yarn. Again, you can see these effects. This is a tweed fabric with those little fibers, little um, fibers with different colors. Uh, another slob yarn. Uh, this looks like more like a snarl yarn. Uh, this is another one. And this is another. So these are fabric samples that you can see uh, made out of these type of fancy yarns. Now, one thing you need to know about, even though we didn't learn about weaving yet and how woven fabrics are made, uh, you need to understand that there are two directions in a woven fabric. One direction is where you put the yarns parallel, very straight with a tension. And then you have these other yarns that kind of go up and down, go over those warp yarns. So when you're using novelty or fancy yarns, you cannot use them in that warp direction, which are put parallel with a tension before you start weaving um, because those yarns have to be really strong and withstand a lot of friction. Novelty yarns are not very strong. They can't withstand a lot of friction because they have all these effects and with friction, they're gonna break or uh, get damaged. So we only use novelty yarns in the 
opposite direction on the woven fabric, in the filling direction. So we have those strong yarns in the warp direction, and then we use the novelty yarns in the filling direction by you, you know, going up and down the warp yarns. Uh, novelty yarns add interest to the fabric, creates really cool, nice fabrics, um, may add crease resistance to fabric because these type of yarns are usually bulky, so there's not a lot of wrinkling when you have those yarns, uh, but it does add hardness. They decrease the durability because those yarns are not very durable. So when you have very durable, strong warp yarns, and then you're using these novelty yarns with them, it drops the durability of the final fabric. It increases cost because novelty yarns are more expensive but it adds a fashion aspect to the fabric. And they're often weak and sensitive to abrasion damage. All right, so those were novelty yarns. Now we'll talk about composite yarns. And I already talked about composite yarns in the last class, so I won't put too much emphasis on this here, but we talked about uh, core spun yarns and covered yarns. And you guys know what I'm talking about, so... Um, for example, this is a rubber yarn in the core, and this is a polyester that covers that rubber. So this is called a covered yarn because you're covering one type of yarn, which is a rubber monofilament, and then you're taking a polyester multifilament yarn and covering that up. So it's a covered yarn, it's a composite yarn. This is again, a double covered yarn with spandex in the core, polyester around that, and then metallic yarn over that one. So again, this is a covered yarn. Uh, coarse spun yarns are generally yarns that have a core yarn, and then you use another type of yarn around it, but you spin those yarns together, and that creates a coarse spun yarn. Uh, and this is usually very, useful when you're making polyester cotton blends or acrylic wool blends and so on. This is a mercerized cotton coarse spun thread. So it's a two ply yarn. And when you separate the plies, you see the single yarns. Each ply has a polyester core and it's wrapped with cotton, okay? so. It's a cotton core, uh, sorry, polyester core wrapped with cotton. And then you take two of those yarns and twist them together, create a two ply yarn. And this looks like a sewing thread actually. All right, so we talked about uh, yarn quality a little bit and yarn performance and yarn characteristics. So we talked about yarn size. We talked about twist of a yarn. We talked about the bulkiness of the yarn, the uniformity of the yarn, and the appearance of the yarn. And um, so we usually talk about these, like we, we can measure the yarn size, we can measure twist, we can measure hairiness, we can measure uniformity um, and abrasion resistance and tensile strength and everything. And the quality of the yarn, again, the more uniform, the better quality. If it has a lot of thin spots, it's usually not good quality unless it's a novelty yarn and the thin spots are, uh, you know, intended. Uh, if there are a lot of naps, which means like entangled fibers around the yarn, that's usually a bad uh, yarn. It's not very good quality. And hairiness, can be a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. So hairy yarns are more sensitive to abrasion and pilling. They will pill more because there are more short fibers sticking out of the yarn. Um, but at the same time, if you're using hairy yarns to make woven fabrics, for example, the hairier they are, especially with air jet weaving, um, it kind of responds to the air jet pressure a lot better. So uh, hairiness can be uh, a positive thing, you know, because it's also more comfortable on the skin. So if you go to your eye textiles, you can also see this uh, yarn classification based on uh, simple novelty and composite yarns. 
And if you look at simple yarns, these are all simple yarns. Um, again, some of them are monofilaments, multifilaments, twisted ply yarns, single yarns, and so on. Again, single yarns and ply yarns that are twisted. And when it comes to novelty yarns, we talked about those slob yarns. Flop yarns or flink yarns. These are the yarns that have small amounts of colorful little fibers along the length, or it can be the same colors. Knob or knot yarns. They have a knot at certain spots. Boucle or loop yarns or retine yarns. Spiral or corkscrew yarns. Chenille yarns. And then we talked about composite yarns that can be covered or coarse spun. Okay, so let's go to the yarn char characteristics. Uh, in your eye textiles, it also talks a little bit about yarn numbering systems, denier, tex. These are different yarn numbers. Uh, this is a 150 denier uh, with 38 filaments per yarn, 150 denier, 100 denier, 300 denier. So that means, you know, this one is the finest and 300 denier is the uh, coarsest because as the number goes up, the coarseness goes up. We talked about the metric count system. Again, this is the NE system. Um, you can see it's 2100 yards per pound versus 1260 yards per pound. So these are coarser, these are finer. We talked about twists. We talked about low twist, napping twist, high twist, average twist. This is a multi-filament yarn, so it has minimal twist. And this is the fabric made out of it. This is a nap twist. This is a creep twist. So it usually has very high twist and you create fabrics that look more crinkled. We talked about the direction of a twist. Again, you know, if you see the twist going in this direction, that kind of corresponds with the middle of S. So that's an S twist. And remember these because I'm definitely going to ask you a question about S twist versus Z twist. Again, this is an S twist, single yarn, spun yarn. This is a Z twist. So woolen yarns are made out of shorter wool fibers. So they have more sticking ends, uh, but worsted yarns are better quality, longer wool fibers. So you don't see as much hairiness as you see here. This is a rayon polyester blend and they blended the yarns during yarn manufacturing. So each yarn has both rayon and polyester in it. Um, in this yarn, this is kind of a composite yarn because there are different yarns that are put together, but it's also a novelty yarn. So it's a boucle yarn and these are nylon. The blue yarns are nylon filament yarns. And these are mohair and wool fibers that are creating the loops here. Um, so if you were to burn this yarn, the boucle parts are wool, so they would burn more into ashes, but then the blue yarns are nylon, so they would actually melt. You have to be careful when you're doing burn tests, for example, because if a yarn is made out of different types of fibers, then the action to the heat is going to be a little bit different. Okay. So we are actually done with yarns. And in our next class, we're going to meet in person and we're going to look at some of those novelty yarns and we will start learning about fabric construction.